Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show, and it's time for your opposition preview. Honestly, these have been a real challenge because I had every intention of keeping an eye on the championship when we left it, and I didn't. <laughs> I'm not about that life. I'm not about the facilities for that man. Do you know what I mean? But now we're going in blind, so we've got a lot of learning to do, uh, and I've got a fantastic first guest for you, Ben from the Bluebirds podcast. Link to his channel is in the description. I'm going to chat about the championship and everything Cardiff. So yeah, enjoy. I don't care. Do it good, no, I think I do it down. down. Thirteenth in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be. Oh, when when have we got leads? So, folks, it's time for the first opposition preview of the season. And, yeah, a season back in the Championship. So, of course, there is a lot to learn about. I mean, I say a lot to learn. It wasn't. We've only been away like three seasons, you know what I mean? It's not as if we've had a long time away, but it will be all relatively new for us. So, as is always the case, we like to get opposition fans on the channel to give us the lowdown on their prospective teams. And, of course, our first game of the season at Ellen Road is against Cardiff, uh, and I've got with me Ben from the Bluebirds podcast uh, to basically tell us uh, everything Cardiff. Uh, but before we do that, Ben, how's things with you, mate? Enjoyed the summer? Uh, yeah, it's been it's been good. Obviously, Ramsey coming back was was a big plus, and you know, after quite a poor and um, just frustrating season last year, it's uh, nice to have a bit of excitement coming into it. Yeah, I can imagine. Like Aaron Ramsey is. A bit of a legend, I would say, uh, in Wales, I would assume anyway. Um, so for him to 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 come back and obviously be pulling on the shirt again, you must be buzzing. Um, bit of a checkered history recently with injuries and stuff. Are we expecting him to to come straight into the side? Has he played any part in pre season at all, Ben? Uh, yeah, weirdly, he I, he's played a bit more than I expected him. He played uh, forty five minutes on his debut against Porto, which was about five days after he had signed and then he played about 60 minutes against Wickham um, a couple of days ago. So I think he, he has got a checkered pass with his, with his injury record, but you know, last season he played 34 games in all competitions, wow. Wales and Nice. So I think Cardiff can hope for, for at least sort of 25, 30 games out of him. And, and that in the championship with Ramsey is, is, is going to be brilliant. And we're hoping yeah. that he's going to be playing more of a number 10 um rather than that sort of pivot role. So hoping to get a bit more of the attack inside of him as well. So so how just on that then, just on the structure and how you expect Cardiff to to set up on on uh, Sunday against Leeds United, what sort of formation has you know the manager been going with? Um it's a bit of a weird one because obviously he's he's quite unknown coming from I hadn't pers personally heard of him myself before he came in. Um it seems to be a back four, but sort of wing backs that aren't your traditional wing backs, they seem to come a bit more into midfield, which is a okay. um, look to have worked so far, sort of maybe suited some of our full backs a bit more than others. Um, it looks like we've got Callum O'Dowder, who was out of position at left back last season, but seems to have sort of half held that role down going into it. Um, he, it is looking like Ramsey's going to be more of a number 10, and then you've sort of got the eight behind them and, and the DM in Ryan Wintour. Um, and then we've got a front three, which is looking likely to sort of be Carlin Grant, um, potentially either Callum Robinson or E.K. Ogbo, and then Shea Yojo on that right-hand side with Yaku Meite, um currently out injured. So it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, I'm not too sure at the moment whether we're going to see the best out of certain players in certain positions until we maybe get a striker or centre mid in. Um, hopefully Joe Riles can come back soon. But... Um, it's a little bit unknown at the moment. It, it's it's mm. looking like it's it's basically just well seeing how he does in in yeah. adapting to the championship, really. So I guess yeah, the, you've got that ironing out process, really, haven't you? I mean, I guess the Cardiff that that might start against Leeds might look totally different again in five, six, seven games time once you know they've started to to play together more more regularly, right? Yeah. So I think we're expecting um, another three signings in. Okay. Um, I think we've got one more coming in before Leeds, which there's not really been any indication to who or exactly what position. Um, I know they're prioritising a centre-back and a centre-mid at the moment. So hoping a centre-mid with Joe Rolls 
out injured. The only thing with preseason so far, I found that when he's not been in, Ryan Wintle's kind of been dragged out of position. It's kind of made our midfield a little bit hectic. So um, I'm hoping it's that, but it'll be an interesting one, Leeds. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I bet, I bet. And Car- you mentioned Carlon Grant. Obviously, Carlon Grant was was well thought of the, a couple of seasons ago. I remember Leeds United were linked, I think, uh, the season we went up briefly uh, for a stint. Um, he seems to have gone off the boil a little bit, but but obviously moving to Cardiff, are you expecting big things? Hopefully, he can sort of refine that form. Uh, I think that got him the move to West Brom, was it, I believe? Um, Hopefully, I mean... He he didn't have a bad start to life at West Brom. He got 18 goals in his first season. Mm-hmm. Um, we're hoping that him and Callum Robinson can kind of get that mix up back between them. They had a really yeah. good partnership. Um, got mm-hmm. quite quite a lot of goal contributions between them in that first season. Um, he did go off the boil last year, and um, a lot of West Brom fans were were quite happy to see the back of him, even though they seem mm-hmm. to like need to find goals in their side as well. Um, which isn't always the best sign, but at the same time, I remember when we signed Callum Robinson, there was a lot of a uh, similar chat about um, work ethic and stuff like that, and it seemed mm. to be the opposite with him. So, hoping for a similar situation, maybe it just didn't quite work out with him at West Brom um, under Corbran, and, and he can yeah. come into Cardiff and and sort of find his feet again because before that, his record was was brilliant at yeah. this level. Yeah, I remember. I remember he was at Huddersfield, weren't he, before he got his move to to West Brom, I think. Um, yeah, like I say, we're coming in coming in blind, but just hearing you you, you mentioned that sort of front three, uh, Shea Joe Robinson, and uh, and of course Carlon Grant, it does sound quite dangerous. You know, I can't I can't lie to you. Um, from a Leeds United perspective, obviously. What I've been noticing, and I'm going to ask everyone this. I suppose you're the you're the gu- guinea pig, if you like, but. A lot of uh, the preseason predictions seem to have Leeds sort of um, struggling, if you like, maybe outside of the top six, seeing a lot of exits. Just what have you made to Leeds with them returning back to the championship? What are your thoughts about Leeds United? Is there anyone you're concerned about? And how do you see our season going? Um, looking from an outside perspective, I think you'll be in the top six for sure. Um, nice. Whether you'll necessarily be automatics, it's it's difficult. I remember when Cardiff came down, everyone's always ultra confident, but... Um, it, it can never necessarily go that way. I think you've done really well with Ethan Ampadu. I think he's going to be a oh, top signing. Um, great, great. Well. I, I, thought, I thought that was insane. A bit, insane. Um, <laughs> I think the only issue I see when when I look at your squad is maybe goals. I think you maybe need a striker. Um, yeah, Bamford's yeah. obviously got a bit of an injury record and um, hasn't quite obviously hit goals for for what, a couple of seasons now. A couple, yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe another central midfielder as well to try and sort of really um, push yourselves forward. But I think mm-hmm. realistically, Dan James, I'm, ha- I'm excited to see how he does in the championship again. Um, yeah. Wales, like him, maybe find his feet a bit more, maybe finding a bit more end product. But I think you're an exciting side. Um, a lot of maybe younger, sort of a un- un- little bit unproven talent. But yeah, definitely an exciting side and... and um, I think I think you'll be in the top six, though, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do hope so. Like I say, I've been seeing some wild predictions uh, over the last week or so. But yeah, just on Ethan Ampadu, obviously, with you being a, a Wales fan, I mean, it, it, that I guess the thing for him, he, he sort of burst onto the scene. You know, I think it was at Exeter, wasn't it? And then he, Chelsea, yeah. and he, I, I think he'd had his debut at like fifteen or something at Exeter, sixteen at Chelsea, and then seventeen at Wales. And he's he's burst onto the scene. He's still only twenty two, which is is wild when you think about it. And Daniel Th- Farker's sort of playing him in the six as opposed to at centre back, where he's spent time at Venezia and stuff in in City ah, and already in the preseason games honestly Ben like he's just been amazing on the ball and his his distribution's brilliant so um it's a great signing right like you mentioned for 7 million as well it's it's wild yeah definitely i think he was a bit of a forgotten talent because he kept going yeah. out to the Syria i think i yeah. i was surprised to not see him go to a, a um a lower down, a lower down Premier League yeah. club. I was, I was yes, quite surprised about that. Um, I mean, he's, I think he's 22. He's got yeah. around 44 Wales appear, Wales appearances, and I think a bit of a crazy stat I saw the other day. I think he's got at 22, he's got about 20 less Wales caps than Ryan Giggs. I mean, wow, it's crazy. That's insane, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that is, is mad. 
he is a brilliant player. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping now that he can really kick on because yeah. with Wales, I think the issue that we've had a little bit, maybe consistency with Ampadu is he gets thrown about a lot and mm. playing as well. He's coming back. There is a different style of football in, in Syria compared to obviously Premier League and, and definitely the Championship. And he's coming back to a squad of, of mainly... Um, lower Premier League Championship players yeah. and he's been playing a completely different style of football so sometimes I think he just looks a little bit off the pace but I'm I'm hoping now that he can just get consistent form and a um, bit of confidence really heading into heading into some, some of the Welsh internationals Definitely, definitely and just like you mentioned as well I hope Dan James's final product improves as well because it's so frustrating at times um, seeing him get into dangerous positions and then just Either slice the ball in a strike or just totally miss everyone when he's tried to cross it. But yeah, uh, maybe the championship's more his level and it'll be able to refine that form that he, he found with uh, Swansea that got him his move to Man United. Um, just on Cardiff, I've uh, <laughs> I've seen you responding to a few wild takes from some of the uh, second tier uh, lads. Uh, we've had a lot of it over the last few weeks as well. Um they were talking about Cardiff fans um, maybe getting a bit overexcited about this top six, and I'd seen you responded and said, no, that's few and far between. But for the majority of, of Cardiff fans, sort of like, what's your ambition this season after a poor season last? I think I think the majority are in, are in agreement that, obviously, if Bullock does really well, maybe we can push sort of um, top half. But realistically, I think I'd be happy with sort of just a quiet season, to be honest. Yeah, um, yeah. Around 14, 15th, I think, is where I see us at the moment. If mm. we can add a good striker, I mean, there's been rumours of keeper more, whether that'll happen or not, we don't know. But, yeah. um, some, if something like that can get pulled off, then, you know, maybe that's only going to boost you up the table. Um, but, yeah, I think around 14, 15, I think like a few people, obviously, when you do championship predictions, you're trying to look at so many different clubs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think a lot of people have kind of gone the safe bet of Cardiff being that 21st. I think every championship prediction I've seen Cardiff have been 21st so yeah. I'm happy that we're not in the relegation zone in them <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think we'll be quite that far down um I think last year when you look at it we didn't really get battered all that often um I think we just simply didn't score so we'd lose 1-0 2-1 every time um mm. we had a run of like 10 games where we scored like two goals or something crazy so um if we get another centre back in, another midfielder and a striker, um, I think defensively would be sound, midfield would be sound, and then if we can just improve the amount of goals we score, I think that will push us up the table a little bit. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we're sort of in the same boat in that respect. I know last season we just wanted a, a normal season, a boring season, if you like, and we ended up getting relegated. So I can relate in that respect. You know, when you just think, just just let it be a nice season, no worries. So, um, but we need a striker as well. I mean, you mentioned Bamford earlier. He picked up a hamstring uh, injury in yesterday's uh, final friendly against Hearts. Uh, Rutter also came off, so I'm not quite sure who's going to lead the line. Uh, yeah, on on Sunday, so we'll have to wait and see. But from a Cardiff perspective. What do you predict your your lineup to look like, Ben? And who do Leeds fans need to you know pay close close eye on on Sunday? Um, so, I think one one to potentially look out for as well is uh, Dimitris Gutas, a new centre back signing. For me, okay. he's um, I reckon he's going to end up being sort of our player of the season. He already looks quite good. He um, I think he's in the Sofa Score team this season for uh, the Super League last season in in Turkey. Okay. Um, Six or five dominating centre back. I think he had a goal line clearance against Wickham, which was which was brilliant. But yeah. um, I think realistically, we're probably going to be looking sort of also up in goal. Perry NG, hoping Mark McGuinness is back. He did miss Wickham's game, which um, if Jack Simpson's starting in that role, he's a good squad player. But it would be a big loss to have Mark McGuinness go out. Um, left back's going to be between Jamalu Collins and Callum O'Dowda. I think obviously Ramsey is going to be sort of a big, a big talking point on the yeah. day first championship game back. Um, hoping Joe Riles is back as well, or a new signing, depending what happens over this next week. And then I think Shea Yojo is one that that's caused a bit of a split, um, probably a seventy thirty split in the in the fan base of where he seems to be. Um, I think I think our local reporter Glenn Williams put it perfectly the other day. 
the 80% of him, you can see why he was at Liverpool for so long. And then the 20% is why it didn't go well. And mm. it's that end product. But preseason, he has looked better. He's looked a bit more consistent. And um, until Yaku Mete's back, I think he will probably take up that right wing spot. Um, I've seen a few Cardiff fans maybe point him for players like Callum Robinson to play there, but playing a right footed player on the right, I just don't think it's going to work. So I'm mm. um, interested to see him there. And I think our big issue as well is that striker position. Um, we've not re- we haven't scored in three preseason games. To be fair, two of them are against Champions League opposition, so hard to look into that too much. But um, the striker position is one that's going to be interesting going into sort of the final days of the window as well, because we need to get someone in there, just a clinical goal scorer, mm. really. And, and hoping Carlin Grant can hit the ground running is is the summary of the squad, really. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, we we need so much more business to be honest. Down the spine, uh, I hear it, but I don't think we'll get any any more in before before the game on Sunday. Well, Leeds Cardiff has always been an interesting game. We saw yes, that <laughs> for so, sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Hoping, hoping the previous record works in our favour again, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah, gives it gives a score prediction then to finish up, mate. Oh, um, I'll take a draw, so I'll say one one. I'll go boring. <laughs> Nice. I'm going to be a bit more bullish and say 2-0, 2-0. Um, <laughs> if you were here, I'd be saying three, but it is what it is. I'll, I'll try to be a little bit nice. Uh, ben, where, where can uh, people follow your stuff, obviously, for post-match reaction and stuff like that after the game? Uh, so the Bluebirds pod um, on Twitter, um, I'm just, I, everything Cardiff, I post on there. Um and I'm hoping to sort of bring similar videos to, to to this back next season. So, yeah, just go and follow on there for, I think, Cardiff Championship um, and just, just keeping updated with everything. Uh, thanks thanks very much, uh, Ben, for, for giving up your time anyway. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit, pal. Thank you. So there you have it, folks. That was Ben's thoughts on Cardiff City. Uh, hopefully a, a mid-table-ish finish for them. It's quite... Mad, because as I said during the video, the likes of Shea Ojo, Callum Grant, Callum Robinson, even Odauda, when we were in here last, I think he was at Bristol City, and they're they're like decent players in the championship. And then you've got a Cardiff side that really struggled and down the bottom end. So, so much has changed, right? But when he read their names, I was thinking, oh, on the counter, they could cause us problems. Um, But we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Uh, The championship's unforgiving. Um, he said a draw. I said two. I'm I'm gonna say three. I know. Sorry, just didn't want to be so bullish <laughs> on the thing. It's not like me, is it? But yeah, listen. I hope you like the video. We'll be doing a lot more of these, of course, because we've got a lot to learn going into these games. So smash a like on the video. Make sure you check out Ben at the Bluebirds Pod. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Get your comments in. Hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in a bit. Well, it's closer to game day. Let's go. <laughs>